ears will low down on why computers use ones and zeros. <laughs> Even I could count higher than that. Two, three, four, seven, eight, ten, twelve. Uh, uh, what? I'll bet there isn't a single person watching right now that hasn't heard the computers deal with ones and zeros. Yet, it's not often stated why. Fact is, if they dealt with anything else, at best they'd be inaccurate, and at worst, they wouldn't work at all. This tape recorder is an analog machine. It records signals that have nuances. In this case, it recorded the intricate wiggles that my vocal cords produced. This has been a recording. It does a pretty good job of it, too. Now, I took that recording and copied it, and then I copied the copy and so on. Here's that same recording after four trips through the process. Now it contains a buildup of noise and static and hum and distortion. Even in the simplest home computer, the signals will have to travel through hundreds of circuits, possibly thousands. As well as the forms of distortion and interference that plague sound equipment, the computer produces plenty of its own interference. Nothing up my sleeve. Let's make it work. Now, the computer contains thousands of tiny circuits, all operating close to each other. So it can be taken for granted that they'll be interfering with each other. To beat the distortion and interference, the digital computer uses signals that only have two possible states. They're either there or they're not there. The famous ones and zeros, or on and off pulses. An electronic system that only has two conditions, on and off, can be made immune to interference by regenerating the signal each time it passes through a section of circuitry. So even if the input has a little interference, the output will be clean. I've made a little computer circuit here. It simply turns on and off. I also have a control that will add some junk to the signal. Now, the bottom trace on the oscilloscope shows the output of my simple circuit. As I add unwanted stuff to the input, that's the top trace, the output stays clean. Because the circuit really only needs to tell whether we mean on or off. In effect, it gets regenerated to its nice, full, clean levels. This is one reason why computers never make little mistakes on their own, only great, big, huge, disastrous ones. Because when the uh, static and noise finally gets bad enough, the next circuit in the chain will generate beautiful-looking, regenerated garbage. Now, this system of on and off is great for keeping the signals accurate, but there's a tiny little hitch. You can only count up to two. It sounds like a major stumbling block, but the counting system we use can only count up to 10. Base 10 uses 10 digits. That's 0 through 9. And when we want to count higher in base 10, we use a second group of digits, and we carry. We know that this number is 10, because our notation system says this location is worth 10. This number is 1 times 1,000, plus 2 times 100, plus 3 times 10, plus 1, 2, 3, Four, 1,234. With one base 10 digit, you can count up to nine. That's 10 numbers if you include the zero. Notice that every column you add in base 10 multiplies how high you can count by 10. Base two, the binary system, can count up to one with one digit. That's two numbers if you include the zero. If you add another column, the count doubles to four, like this. 0, 1, 2, 3. That's four numbers. Another column will double the possibilities to 8, and so on. Now, instead of 1s, 10s, 100s, and 1000s, there are 1s, 2s, 4s, 8s, 16s, and so on. To figure out a base 2 binary number, you follow the same procedure as you do in base 10. Add up the places. So this number would be 1 times 8, plus 0 times 4, plus 1 times 2, plus 1, uh, 11. And now, on the Acme School of Stuff, we will watch this sophisticated piece of modern technology count up to 255. These light bulbs represent the digits 0 and 1. When they're not lit, we're going to call them 0. When they are lit, we'll call them 1. The numbers on them are their values. Here we go. Right now, we're at 0. No bulbs are lit. And the 1 bulb comes on. To increase the count, we're going to have to carry. The 1 bulb goes out, and the 2 bulb comes on. Now, the one bulb comes back on. This is the binary number three. One times two plus one. 
Still counting. One bulb's going to go off. That'll carry to the two bulb, which is on. That carry will take the two bulb off, but carry it to the four bulb. OK, that's the number four. Now, to step to five, the one bulb comes back on. None of the digits have to carry. So we have one times four plus one, five. OK, don't panic. I'm not going to describe the sequence all the way up to 255. This is a repetitive sequence, and there's a simple way to look at it. As a computer counts upwards, each time a lower value bulb turns off, the next higher value bulb changes state. If it's on, it goes off, and vice versa. If we were to stop the count, freeze it at any place, all we have to do is add up the numbers on the bulbs to get the base 10 number. Each digit in the binary system is called a bit. That's a contraction of the words binary digit. Now, a bit is pretty useless on its own, so computers deal with groups of them called bytes. This 8-bit byte can represent the numbers up to 255. That's 256 numbers if you include the zero. And it's strange but true. The whole first generation of home computers didn't know anything above the number 255. They had to deal with everything in 8-bit bytes. Binary system seems real cumbersome to us because of the large number of bits required to represent large numbers. But remember, every time you add one more bit to the number, the possibilities double. There's an interesting bit of confusion because of this. 1K in base 10 is the mathematical abbreviation for 1,000. 1K in base 2 is, ooh, about 1,000. It's actually 1,024, and that's how high you can count with 10 bits in a number. Adding one more bit gives 2,048, but we call it 2K. A so-called 64K computer actually has 65,536 memory cells, a tiny little discrepancy of 1,536, and we think they're so accurate. Adding and subtracting is fascinating in base 2. Mathematical operations using only two digits leads to strange statements like uh, 1 and 1 is 1, and 1 or 0 is 1. Multiplying and dividing are also done with repetitive adding and subtracting. Everything a computer does is tedious, particularly uh, any math problem with a result greater than 255. There's one little trick they have up their sleeves that makes them look so clever. They're very, very fast.